All right, so check this out. This is the new Tesla tunnel that they built here at uh, SEMA. So we're gonna actually go down here and uh, go for a ride, I guess. <laughs> this is cool. So apparently um, Tesla bored a bunch of tunnels underneath Las Vegas. What? This is crazy. <laughs> it literally is a tunnel underground under Vegas. All right, here we go. Push. This is my first time in a Tesla. All right. Wow. They want that. to expand it through several parts of Las Vegas. Oh, how many miles total? I believe 30 miles oh, in total. That's pretty good. And how many stops? Around 50. Wow. It's got to be its own bus system. Look at that. That thing has cameras everywhere. So here we are entering the tunnels. <laughs> this is so cool. A little cross Whoa, <laughs> this thing's got some torque, man. Wow. This is the way yeah, it's a little intersection. <laughs> that was quick. That was a 30 minute walk. There you yeah, go. There that was you a, go, about half a mile. That was my first ride in a Tesla and my first ride in the uh, oh. Tesla Loop or tunnels. Oh yeah, that's right, Tesla Loop. The Tesla Loop. Very cool. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. So this is the uh, the new West Hall. Brand new. <laughs> a over a million square feet. Let's go inside and check this one out. Good morning. Good morning. All right, here we go. We're going inside the new West Hall for the first time. Checking it out. This is the West Hall, right? Yep. Badges this way. Did yeah. you pre-register, guys? We got our badges. Wow. It has that new. It has that new hall smell. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at this. Actually, I've seen this before. I don't know what it's called, but I've seen it before. That's pretty cool. That's a cool, look how short the uh, hood is. I don't even know what that is, but it's cool. And then here goes, uh, what is this? F-250 with a Raptor kit, wide body. That's nice. Wow. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> that is so cool. And look, another Bronco. Whoa. Hey, there's the new Tundra. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Finally get to see the new Tundra. First time. So much hype. So much hype over this thing. I'm excited. I'm like a kid on Christmas. Finally get to see the new Tundra. It's right there. I see it. There's the new Tundra. Oh man. There it is, finally. After all these years. The new Tundra. Wow. You know, like they say, they, you always hear guys say this, like it looks different in person. It really does actually look really good in person that's nice oh man i love it this is the limited trim as you can see right there let's take a look at the back here oh that's nice oh this one has the tailgate see you can touch the tailgate here there's a button right there, you can touch it and the tailgate drops down, like a soft drop. Dude, that is so nice. This is the TRD Off-Road. This is the model I'd like. Oh, man. I like your jacket. It's like dressed up, but it's like horrible. Horrible. I like it. It looks good. Have your name on it. Oh, man. I mean, I, uh... 
I yeah. knew I wanted to buy this truck before, but now I'm 100% sure that I want this truck. That is so nice. Check it out, the new convention hall has a huge eatery. That's nice. Lunch time is gonna be pretty good. Release the Kraken. Here we go, we're going, we're going, we're going. We're going in. We're going in for the first time. SEMA baby! SEMA! <laughs> we are officially in SEMA 2021. Oh, it's been so long. Overland experience at SEMA 2021 is way in the back of the new hall. So Mike and I are making a beeline straight to the back, straight to Overland experience. Just because, well for me, I really want to see that first. Don't get me wrong, there's a lot of cool stuff here, but I want to see that first, so let's go. Overland experience at SEMA. This looks like a lot of fun, so let's see what we got. Here's a 2020 Rubicon Gladiator. I've never seen this tent before. Delta Overland rooftop tent, never heard of them. A lot of guys getting in the game. Oh, Tough Stuff. I've heard of them. Tough Stuff Overland. I have heard of those guys. Very nice. Weston. Oh, here's where you put your high lift jack right there. If you're wondering what that T stands for. It's where you mount your high lift jack. It's a beautiful truck. What else we got? This is kind of becoming an old school vehicle here. The uh, gladiators are, are so popular, it's kind of like what everybody needs because it has so much room. Anti-gravity. Oh, this is a lithium ion battery booth, but they're using this, uh, what is this? Who makes this one? I don't want to call it the wrong name. Is it an Earth Cruiser? There's so many of these companies now that make these big trucks. I know it's built off of Mitsubishi uh, Fuso though. It's nice that there's a pass through. So you can climb from the driver's seat into the camping area. Oh, you can't go in. Oh, these guys make batteries though. Look at that, you got a power bank, lithium power. Nice. One, two, three, four, five, six outlets. So we're actually taking on interstate That's nice. It's got a pop top roof by the way. So you can get good headroom. It's a forerunner. With the ARB front bumper. Those ARB bumpers are huge. This thing has got everything on it, man. Everything in the kitchen sink. Look at that. You got fuel, you got water. Look how big the protection is there, I like that. There's a little table there for prep. Got your Dometic fridge. I want a easy slide. Dobinson's truck box. More storage containers in there. I like these flip down tables, that's nice. <laughs> He's got an axe bolted on there. Everything in the kitchen sink. Notice something, right? He's got an e bike. This is a quiet cat, fat tire e bike with a mid drive motor. And it's sitting on the hitch. And then it kind of folds out. That's kind of crazy how far it actually folds out. You'd think that it, it would like snap off. It's so so far out there the leverage on that thing is nuts and these e-bikes are heavy this is like a 70 pound bike i think with the battery pack and the motors that's like 70 pounds if you put two of them on here man i'd be kind of worried but you can do it 
Like I said, everything in the kitchen sink, man. Oh, Black Series. I like these guys. Love this, man. This is the HQ19, too. This is the model I like. Super rugged. I've seen this at Overland Expo. I like the diamond plate, so it's really tough. The frame is galvanized, super beefy. Lots of storage, outside kitchen for cooking and, and hot cold water. Even got prep space. There's your utensils. And another prep table. More storage. It's got rock sliders. How many RV uh, travel trailers do you know that have rock sliders? How many tra uh, travel trailers do you know that have two full-size spares on the back? That's crazy. And then, of course, look at that suspension, trailing arm suspension. And this one has basically double axles, essentially. This is nuts, man. I love this trailer. I want one of these. It's just out of my budget, though. Again, rock sliders, dual pane acrylic windows that pop out like awnings. More storage in the front. Let's go inside here. I steps. Can I go inside? Oh, cool. Thanks. Look at this. Nice queen size bed. Storage on each side, storage above, storage on top. So nice, man. This is glamping, guys. My wife really likes glamping. And I won't lie, I like glamping too. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> then here's your kitchen area. Stainless steel sink. Nice. Big enough to wa actually wash dishes and pans. That's, I don't like it when they have the small ones. It's hard to wash pans and pots. Lots of storage. Three burner stove with an oven and a microwave. Don't know if it's convection or not. There's a little dinette that obviously turns into a bed. So you can fit an adult over here or maybe two kids. Here's your control panel, all your systems, a vented, uh, you just like a vent window. No fan though. Dometic AC, oh, that's nice. Look at all this storage, man. Tons and tons of storage over here. Storage over here. Very nice. Fridge, I don't know how big it is, but it looks pretty big, considering it's a travel trailer. Oh my God, look at that. <laughs> it's got a washing machine. I'm sure that's a combo washer and dryer. There's your uh, foot flush toilet. Nice little sink. Storage. Beautiful shower. Oh my God. This is like, if I had to go off grid for a month, I could do it in this thing, man. And then, of course, here's how tall it is. That's nice. I'm about 5'9", five, 5'10", five, with my favorite shoes on. Got tons of room in here. But yeah, there you go. That's a look at the uh, Black Series HQ19. You know Patriot has to be here. Remember seeing Patriot here at SEMA several years ago? And uh, they are back. They make some of the best stuff out of Australia. Look at this. This is their little adventure trailer with a rooftop tent on top. Mike from Last Line of Defense. This is his tremor. That's nice, man. What's up, man? Hey. That's cool. That rap is gorgeous, man. He's a big fan of multicam if you watch his channel. Here's something I've never seen before. Lance is getting into the uh, off-road teardrop trailer game, and they come—they're coming in with a big one, man. 
Whoa. That is cool. You can see lots of headroom. I'm, I'm assuming you could probably put a little tent around this if you really wanted to. I don't know what these walls are. It's probably composite, I'm assuming, to save weight. More of that Molly kind of setup so you can put anything you want here. He's got lights and the first aid kit. This is really nice. Look at the headroom in here, man. Look at the headroom. Tons of room in here. Again, I'm 5'10 with shoes on. This is really nice. See that? So you got a dinette. If you can convert that into the bed, or you can just leave the bed. It looks like you have a small, what is it, a double over there. You can leave that set up at all day long. And you got your toilet right there. Oh, look, there's where you keep your towels nice and dry. And your hot and cold water. That is cool. Oh, look at this. Somebody actually mounted an LED light on the... I don't even know what you call those things. Like branch deflector mounts or something? I don't know what those are. That's cool. Oh, look. More and more people are doing these uh, molly, these molly racks. And they even have some that you can mount on your tire. That's nice. You can put basically anything you want on here. You want to put bags, cans, boxes. You can put anything you want. Oh, look at this. This is nice. It's a fold out table. And it has a track system here. So you can put pretty much anything with, go, uh, with uh, what do you call those? Ram mounts. That's nice. All right, I'm at the Expedition One booth at SEMA, and I had to stop by these guys. They got a Bronco. Go figure, they have a Bronco. But they uh, they got an Expedition One uh, bumper for the Bronco, sliders for the Bronco, obviously the matching rear bumper with their famous swing away tire set up here. Yeah, that's nice. They make some really cool stuff. I mean, we're just gonna fire on the whole booth here. This is the, uh, the Chevy with the diesel engine. I like their design, like the, the way their stuff matches the, the vehicle. It's like a perfect match. It's, it's actually really beautiful. Again, the sliders, AEV. This is the AEV setup on this one. That's so pretty. It's like a work of art, man. I love it. When I get my Tundra, man, I want to get, I think I want to get these guys as bumpers. I don't know. It's a toss-up. There's so many good stuff out there. But uh, this is high on the list for sure. Look at this. This Lexus GX is beautiful. So look at the little touch here. Bumper goes all the way, protects all of your body. You got mounting points here for recovery. Got this beefy ladder here. It's actually built into the bumper, not the tailgate itself, which is nice. Double jerry can holder, full size spare. That is just so nice. I'm such a geek when it comes to these guys' gear, man. It's so nice. And then look at this. Again, Lexus is a little different. You know, they, they're kind of they have a crazy grill in the Lexus, so they matched Lexus Lexus's design because they have the spindle grill. Well, they went ahead and matched the design of their Lexus spindle grill. That just looks so cool. Oh, that's nice. It makes me want to buy a Lexus and then do this rig right here. <laughs> that is so cool. So check this out. It's called the Hitch Hotel. 
get to your location. That is pretty Whatever cool. Whatever you can fit inside it comes out. Then you put like a queen size air mattress inside of it, and you're good to go. So it's basically a camper. Look at the size of this thing. It's like a queen size bed in there. But it telescopes and becomes a super compact little little tiny trailer. See, there's your uh, your hitch. You pull it like a little tiny trailer. You got some storage. Double pane windows. But this is the size of it right here. Like that's it right there. That's the size of it. It just goes. Doo -doo 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 -doo. It's like an accordion. It's, it's that big. But then when you get to where you're going. That is awesome. Look at that's a big that's a queen size bed in there. Lights, windows, vents. Goat trailers. These are goat overland trailers. So what this is is a little tiny compact adventure trailer. You put all your gear in here. Camping gear, survival gear. Look, he's got a little uh, charcoal thing going on in the back. Prep area. That's cool. He's got a little stove here. I guess you can open it up. Yeah. Little propane cooker. Rooftop tent with an awning. You got your refrigerator, propane, power management. It's got like. It's at L track, I guess. Kind of like airlines have. You can put anything there, it looks like. Look how tiny it is. It's really tiny. It's like microscopic. This might actually be the smallest trailer at the show, huh? Is that what you guys are famous for? Yep, it's having yep. the smallest trailer? So go where you want, camp where you want, not where you have to. You know what I like too is um, you can have everything packed and then on a Friday afternoon just hook up and go. That's right. That's yep. cool. I like that. How much does something like this go for? Like the base model? So the base model is this one up here. Mm -hmm. This has all the different accessory packages for so the power, the water. Oh, this is your this is everything. everything. Yep. Okay. So this one's about $16.5. Uh huh. That one starts for eleven five. Okay. Yeah. That is pretty cool. It looks rugged too. Yep. And then looks like you got torsion bar suspension, I think. Cool. And then you got a three sixty hitch there, go any direction. That is really cool. And it can fit in your garage. I like it. <laughs> so we were talking to the owner of the company and he was saying this was initially designed for guys with side-by-sides and UTVs because it's 50 inches wide. So if you have a nice side-by-side -side and you want to go deep out into the backcountry, but you want to bring extra gear, extra fuel, and some camping gear to sleep, you could literally take your side-by-side -side out on these 50-inch trails with a trailer and stay out there for extended periods of time. Drop this at the top of a mountain or a lakeside and then go explore even more and have a base camp all set up. It even has a hitch in the back for your bikes and stuff. But yeah, that's cool, man. I like it. I might have to buy a side-by-side -side now just to get one of these. <laughs> so the website to contact these guys, if you want to learn more, it's hinkleyoverlanding.com or goatoverlandtrailers.com. What's up, guys? I'm at iCamper at SEMA, and this is probably the biggest tent I've ever seen. So they're famous for their um, rooftop tents. It's kind of like a hybrid hard shell that flips over to the side, and it, it has a little extension here that flips out. So you can sleep four people up there, no problem. But then they have this annex. Look at this annex that attaches to it. It's got tent poles, a floor, and walls, shoe storage, gear storage. Yeah, that's pretty nuts. Now, of course, it all zips up, keeps the bugs out, or you can open it up. That's cool. Awesome. Let me know if you got any questions. I'm just admiring your humongous annex. Yeah, man, this welcome, is cool, man. man. This is the party room. Let me uh, turn the light on here. <laughs> of course. So this welcome. is kind of nice. You can put all your lounging stuff over here and chill out get out of the bugs get out of the rain so four people can fit up here four huh? people comfortably can be up here wow that's cool this is a big selling point of eye camper right here guys is they can fit four people and then we you got... also if the stock mattress still isn't enough we uh -huh. have a brand new sleeping system as well uh -huh. it's like an x-pet style air mattress yeah um so that will give you even more comfort but the beautiful thing is with that they're custom cut 
around all the gas stress. Oh, nice. So it's a perfect fit when you're in there. I, I saw something else that looked, caught my eye. That little one. Was that new? The little one. That yes, little tent. that's going to be our brand new wood can it, style can, you, can we go over there and yeah, like, talk sure. about it? Sure. So, so these what is guys it? are going to be brand new for us. We're going to be entering into the wedge market. So this one that we're looking at right now is going to be our single person unit. Gotcha. So it's going to be at about 114 pounds, so very lightweight, but still very durable. We have uh, track rails that go on the exterior for mounting anything from bikes, traction boards, lights, all that good stuff. The setup is extremely easy if you're familiar with wedge style. Two gas struts at the end. Once you take the latches off, give it a nice push. It takes over the rest. So it's like 20 seconds in your own. It's oh. not even that. Not it's, even that. It's super quick. So that's yeah. the ability. This one is going to be, uh, prices haven't been finalized, but it's mm -hmm. definitely going to be more mindful for the entry and midpoint level mm -hmm. as far as the consumers that are looking. You got at a ballpark something. price? Uh, I don't have nah, anything officially listed okay. yet. So we have track systems on the side. So if you wanted to mount, you know, hatchets or axes or whatever you have that ability on the fronts um, we're looking at even have ability for running lights light bars pods whatever you want to do uh, and nice. then in the back you can see there the integrated solar panel oh so oh. we have all that as well nice so, is that standard or is that extra um, i don't know if that will be standard or an accessory option yeah. so that to be determined okay but to showcase as far as the ability that it can have it yeah uh, that is there uh, we also have, uh, we're going to be releasing cargo bags too, as you can see. Yeah, that's nice. Um, colors and specs and all that, this is still a late prototype, so it's not 100% mm. finalized, but still to showcase that if you needed to store, you know, wet items or mm. anything that you don't necessarily want in your vehicle, yeah. you can still put it on there and securely attach it to the roof. Nice. All right, so is this, I'm sorry, did you say this was a prototype or is it just This a, is a very late prototype, late, so very okay. close to what close will to be production already. close oh, to be what okay. will be in production. They might change a few things here and there, but ideally this is going to be roughly what it looks like. So available maybe by I summertime? Would say, <laughs> I mean, without quoting me for all the YouTube yeah. people, I would probably say uh, mid to late Q2, if not early Q3 of next okay. year. Everything right. that you see here in our booth will be released in 2022. It's nice. just a matter of which stage is going to be rolled out. That's very cool. I like that. I like yeah. the fact that you guys have a little tiny single and then you have the gigantic, gigantic exactly. tent. You have right. everything in between. Yeah. I already had an idea. If I had this, I'd build a deck where I can stand. <laughs> so if I was yeah. at like a concert or something, exactly. you could stand up on top you of your deck. vehicle. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. That right there. Maybe even put some chairs there. Absolutely. <laughs> And just roll right into your tent. Yeah, you have everything on your roof. That's exactly. Cool. exactly. So this is going to be our disco series. It's going to be a four-piece unit. So we have our pre-season enamel coated skillet, our Cavea stove 7500 BTU, which is removable, which is actually nice. So whether you want it on the tripod to cook with the skillet or separately for oil and water, you can do that as well. Um, on top of that, the aluminum uh, adjustable tripod legs. There's no hard stops. Everything can be adjustable from sitting down, standing, or in between, depending on the height. Um, what's really cool is the actual skillet itself can be removed and placed on the pulley chain, and you can utilize it to cook over a fire. Oh, that's it can be adjusted at any height you want and utilized for different setups. So whether you want to utilize the skillet or if you want to rock a Dutch oven, you can do both. Oh, I see there's a pulley system right yeah, there. Pulley system on there. It can be adjusted at any height. Oh, cool. Also included is going to be our table. We have little drink cutouts, but also our um, a little utility rail here for holding different items as far as towels or your cookware or whatever. Is this just as an example of how small it gets? Is that what yeah, it is? Yeah, so this would be at the lowest height with all the legs folded in. So if you had a chair, you can cook right here, set everything else right there. This is all packed up. These are going to be an accessory optional item uh, are tote bags so one for the skillet itself and then another to host all the tripod legs the stoves and any other wear that you want with the kitchen system yeah i've never seen one like this that's so modular yeah I've and never that's, seen that's that. the whole goal behind it so um it, you really to be able to be at any point yeah so they come ready to run off of isobutane yeah with an upgraded adapter you can also run regular propane whether it's the models or the tanks yeah. And um, from there, even if you wanted, if you forgot your camera tripod, there's even a quarter inch screw <laughs> on there so you can mount your camera. Uh, so, emergency tripod. Yeah, emergency tripod. <laughs> yeah. So you got everything Go you need right there. At the Fab Fours booth, check this out. So this is a Tacoma on steroids right here. Oh my God. 
Look at this thing. Fan 4 is just famous for a lot of over-the-top stuff. And this one's pretty cool. I like this bumper. That's nice. Well, this bumper is actually not too crazy. But I like how it fits the factory lines. Of course, it gives, allows you to mount a winch and some LED fog lights. They went crazy on the axles, man. Look at this thing. So this is a solid axle conversion on a Tacoma. Normally, this is an independent. But he's got hydraulic assist steering. I don't even know what kind of axles are in there, but they're beefy, crazy big. Holy crap. Or I struts. Look at that work that went on in here, man. They did some serious customizing. That allowed them to run some bigger tires for sure. Looks like they cut into the fenders as well. But this is insane. Mickey Thompson's, man. These things are huge. What size are these? This is a 43 inch tire. That's nuts on a 17 inch beadlock wheel. And then they got these doors. I'm assuming these are Fab Fours because, yeah, it says right there. So these are like half doors made out of steel. I think that's steel. Yeah, it looks like it. Those are nice. So that's what it looks like on the inside. And on the outside, you got that cool half door kind of look. Keep you inside the vehicle. Not too many people take the doors off of their uh, Tacomas, but now you can. That's cool. There's their rack. And here's a look at the uh, rear suspension. Again, they got a long travel thing going on here. That is a beast, man. Check out these uh, fender wells. I'm pretty sure they had to cut the body to mount those on there. Because those are some big openings. <laughs> And then here's the rear bumper. I like it. It's a good uh, good look. Incredible, man. Who would not want a solid axle Tacoma? Beautiful. All right, so... Remember I said Fab Fours is over the top? Here's an example of over the top. So they got this Jeep Wrangler with 44 inch wheels. Here's their uh, famous fender flares. Damn, that is crazy. Forty-four inch tires. Look at that hydraulic steering. That is a beast. There's their grumper. Nuts, right? Check it out. Armadillo booth at SEMA. So this is like kind of like a bull bar. Normally a bull bar would be tiny, right? A little small thing. You just mount it right underneath. And it looks like a bumper. It looks like a bumper. You still keep the original bumper, and then you have a bull bar in front. And then you have some steps and racks in the back. So yeah, that's kind of cool. This is for the guy that doesn't want to take off his original bumper. You can run a bull bar that looks like a bumper. You can't put a winch on it, but you can put lights. It's a good place to mount your lights. This is the Easy Raider. We work for Easy Raider. Uh, this ATV, all electric, was designed and manufactured in Israel, mainly for military use. But now we've discovered this huge recreational uh, market. Yeah. Uh, like I said, this is a 4x4 electric, the smaller version. It's a 2x4 rear wheel drive. What size uh, motors are in the wheels? So this is 1200 watts each wheel. Wow. 3000 watt battery. So you get about 50 miles off of this, wow. and top speed here is 29 miles an hour on the smaller models, about 25. You can probably get 30 miles on the smaller vehicle. They're all foldable, so this handlebar can come down, I'll show you. Sure. And 
easily put any small SUV, station wagon, and obviously anything bigger. So these all fold down. Nice. One man can literally roll it into the car. How much does it weigh total? So this is just over 200 pounds. That's just under 300 pounds. And then that can carry another 300 pounds on it. And full size, full weight. Again, this model was built for soldiers. The requirement was two soldiers per unit. Oh, wow. So in the booth, you can see we have a second passenger stand. One wow. standing in front, <laughs> one in back. And the power unit cart. Get about a thousand pounds of payload. Oh, okay. With the car, you get additional extended because you have more batteries in the car. I see it's got a thumb throttle and then obviously hydraulic brakes, right? right. Is it one lever for all brakes or is nope. there a front and rear? It's just like a dirt bike, front and rear. You got your uh -huh. throttle, reverse button. Oh, as nice. You, as long as you're hitting reverse and the throttle is going backwards. Okay. And the battery's right under this board, so you have a very low center of gravity. Yeah. All the controllers, regulators, the computers in here. Mm -hmm. How long does it take to recharge? Fast charge is about two hours. Whoa. Mm -hmm. If you're doing it overnight, yeah. That must be a, a huge amp charger, huh? It's not that big. It's about this this size. It's like six, six amps. Amp. Six yeah. amp. Yeah, yeah. But you know, overnight you want to do the slow charge. Take yeah. about four to six hours. Okay. Just plug into a regular house outlet. Yeah. Regular house outlet. Nice. And I see you got, obviously you got provisions for a seat. Yep. That's for nice. For a seat. For uh -huh. Any carrier. Yep. Mm -hmm. Trailer. Carriers, different models, golf cart bags. Mm -hmm. Whatever you can think of, you can probably put it on. Nice. So um, what we see here, is this pretty much what the customers get if they bought yep. bought yep. it? So the same uh, shocks and all that stuff? Too? Same shocks, same chassis. Every uh, okay. The add-ons are this handguard, oh. the skid plate, yeah. the luggage carrier, different models. Nice. I signed up for the test ride. Right. So I want to get some on yeah. like riding footage of this thing. That's awesome. Yeah. And uh, did you mention the price already? So the smaller model, the recreational one, is about 8500 mm -hmm. And this horse, the workhorse, is 19000 Makes sense because it's uh, military grade, right? It's all military <laughs> grade. It's yeah. designed for the military. They just look, they resemble toys, but they are not. They no. are 100% ATV work vehicles. What I like about it, too, is you can go deep in the off, off you know, off grid out there in the country Correct. silently you're not making a bunch of noise like with a four-cylinder no motor so hunters love it no yes. noise yeah. no emissions not giving off any scent with the e-cart they can actually get their game mm -hmm. and carry it and all the equipment the rifles they need yeah um, again it's just mimicking the sniper units that use it yeah right? so yeah very cool same, i love same it concept yeah i absolutely love it i think that's the one of the coolest vehicles here at sema what about our website? Let's uh, yeah, we give have them a website. website. EasyRaiderUS.com. Look at this. Dude. Those are like motorcycle brakes. Four piston hydraulic disc brakes. That's crazy. This is the one with the seat. d &M air shock in the back. Our company is uh, Recon, Recon. PowerBikes.com. Recon. Uh -huh. And uh, we have, uh, this is our Ranger model. This is a mid-drive, uh -huh. uh, 1,000 watt. Two oh. times, two times the uh, torque as what a hub motor bike is. Is that a Bafang Ultra or the Bafang 1000? The Fang 1000. 1000. Oh, okay. And then the battery. What is the battery in there? It's a 48 volt uh, lithium ion. Nice. Um, color screen, hydraulic brakes. Oh, nice. Oh yeah. LED I lights. So this is the hardtail. They're all hardtails, right? Yes, they are. Because hunters got to carry loads, right? Yes, yes. That's and, cool. And then our striker bike, the it's, all it's drive different. one here. This is our all-wheel drive. It's got a hub motor, 500-watt motor in the front, and a 500-watt motor in the rear. Two 500s. So combined 1,000 watts, mm -hmm. all-wheel drive. So it's great for uh, soft terrain, yeah. sand, uh, mud, snow. I put studded tires on. I'm from Ohio. Yeah. You can you can ride out on the ice of the lake. 
because you got those carbide tip tires on there. I actually really like this setup because I've ridden two wheel drive e bikes. They're amazing. They are. It's amazing what you can do with these things. Eight, eight gear, uh, eight uh, speed sh uh, SRAM uh -huh. gears. Um, Hydraulic disc brakes, right? Yes. Yes, oh, sir. Really oh, yeah. Very cool. Bikes. This one with both motors, um, probably closer to 25, 30 miles on range. Uh, single motor, you can definitely do 50. There are five levels of pedal assist, so it depends on how you ride it. Lower the, lower the pedal assist, the more work you do. The higher the pedal assist, the more the bike does. And then we have a thumb throttle that you can take off if you need to, depending on your, uh, on your uh, laws in your state. But. Um, which is like riding a motorcycle. Do, do the batteries come in different options, like sizes? Yes, we have 11.5 uh, amp hours or something like that. Mm -hmm. Then we have 14 and then I think a 17. Are, so, they, uh, are they a specific brand of cells that are in there? 48, 48 volt lithium ion battery made by Samsung. Oh, they so, are Samsung. Yeah, okay, so we yeah. don't do the cheaper batteries we do yeah. the best in the market. Nice. So theoretically, you can have a spare battery and just hot swap. Yeah, you can yep. put a battery yep. back there. In fact, those uh, bags are designed to carry the batteries. Oh, here's the sheriff, so the sheriff back there. Right uh, law enforcement military, so yeah. we built. <laughs> just keep so an extra battery in there. Battery in the back. I like the fact you have a chain guide on here. Mm. It doesn't, well, oh, because when you're out there bouncing around in the back country, you, you don't have to worry about your chain coming off. This bike, though, being mid-drive, you break a chain, you're out of commission. Yeah, it won't. It that won't one, be. you can take the chain off and you can still ride it out. Honestly, yeah. Because they're out drive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same with this 750. That's cool. So let's talk about pricing. So how much is the mid-drive? This one is our top line model. It's mm -hmm. 4000 Yeah. yeah and you surprised. said how much was the double motor? That's 34 34 and then this, this is your 26. This is the entry level ascension. Yeah. Right so let's say you're going to stay on pavement or uh -huh. hard surfaces and it's pretty flat. Pretty flat. This bike will do you just fine. Yeah. You guys got to see this. I saw this bike on the internet, on YouTube, and now I see it in person. And I'm like a kid in a candy store, man. This thing is badass. You gotta see this motorcycle. Hey, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, uh, I heard you say you saw a video. Of this I one? saw it on YouTube. Right, yeah. right, right, right. I think it was overseas though, like in Europe, right? Right. So uh, this, a lot of these bikes, they came out in Europe. Yeah, uh, yeah. We're the first ones to bring it here in the states. Uh, four gears, yeah. fully electric, uh, ET bike. Um, basically, top speed is around 40, 50 miles per hour. That's this nuts. is about the same thing. <laughs> uh, fully electric, has a lot of torque. So the the battery, what kind? Do you know the size of the battery that's in here? Uh, the lithium battery, uh, 92 volt, 40 amp. Uh, rated voltage is 92 volt. Um, charging time on a slow charger is five hours. The fast one is two hours. Wow. Uh, top speed 110 kilomiles per hour, Whoa. and the range is about 50 miles in distance. Four speed yeah. transmission, auto clutch for a one gear ride, manual clutch to change gears for stunts. That is badass, man. Right. Are you guys doing test rides? <laughs> no, I have the show. They don't let us. <laughs> they got the Ford booth right out front, man. Yeah, I wish, man. Not in here, though. So, um, but believe me, it's a. Uh, I've I've rode it. It's, yeah. It's torque. The torque, torque is, is hard, crazy, right? right? Like I've I've almost accidentally popped the wheelie on it. Oh just man. Uh, myself that the is so cool. How much did these sell for? Uh, we can do a retail about ten thousand. That's about yeah, a couple, little bit more than a, a gas bike, but yeah. you don't have to worry about carburetors right. or tuning. Right. Fuel. Right. right. And then everything we sell comes with a one year warranty. So anything happens even yeah. after the one year, we have all the replacement parts in stock in yeah. Los Angeles or in Riverside. Oh, in LA. And okay. we can just ship it out to you guys. That's a badass bike, yeah. man. Can you roll that out here real quick yeah. so you can get a better shot of it? Yeah. That's pretty badass. Because that rear hub motor is gigantic. Yeah, man. well this one's a, this one's an eight thousand watt. Eight thousand watt. Yeah. So it holds That's crazy. I have an e bike with a thousand watt motor. <laughs> yeah. And I so think that's pretty much. Those ones, uh, the fat tire ones are the thousand watt motors. Yeah, These ones, 8,000. Yeah, 8,000, yeah. That's so, so crazy. Uh, definitely is probably the fastest one in the market. There's some companies yeah. that do 12,000 watt, yeah. but it's extremely dangerous. It's extremely <laughs> dangerous. So we don't want to, yeah. you know, this is already pushing it to the limit because this one, depending on the uh, driver's weight, yeah. you can go anywhere from 70 to 85 miles. And it depends on oh, your terrain. But man. this one, I mean, when you get on it, every time I go on it, I start crying. <laughs> 
the wind just boom. Yeah. It's off road only, but we have a cap that you can cap it at uh, in the settings. You can cap it at. We're in California, so I, I believe the law is 25 or 28. So you can cap it at that, yeah. and then after that, you know, it, it's kind of up to you. But yeah. these two are off road use. This one is quote unquote street legal because you got the pedals. The pedals there, yeah. So you can pedal and do it, but you, you got that throttle. But these two are strictly off road. How much is something like this if I were to buy one? It basically depends. You can get a 3,000 watt, a 5,000 watt, and an 8,000 watt. They all have different price ranges, but the cheapest one, which is 3,000, runs about, I think, like now, like 32, 35. That's not bad. And then the 8,000, we're putting it around five to $6,000. That's not bad, and again, actually. Yeah. The one year warranty. Yeah. Anything happens after that one year warranty, we're in LA. We're so we, we have all the parts, we just ship it straight out too. Nice. So there's definitely a high demand on them. We try to do pre sales on all the bikes. Yeah. So sometimes by the time our shipping gets here and we're already assembling them, basically we're, we're kind of sold out. So yeah. if, you, if you guys want to, like these, these two are definitely our most popular. I mean, all of them are all popular because we're, we're pretty much. Sold bikes out are hot right yeah, now, right man. Right now, bikes is it's it's, just crazy. 2020 man made the yeah. market go crazy. Oh, yeah. I mean COVID COVID definitely got people more involved because <laughs> yeah. there wasn't much to do and you just go outside and that was the safest thing. You just get on yeah. your bike and ride. So. I spotted a pretty cool looking concept vehicle. Check this out. It's called the Beast. I'm assuming it's built off of a Silverado LT4 on the hood. The specs say 650 horsepower. 650 pounds of torque supercharged v8 that's pretty mean looking it looks like a halo warthog that's nice now that is what i'm talking about man i like this one they need to put some of these uh design cues into the silverado because i'm not a big fan of the silverado in general but i like this pretty cool right hit that like button to support my channel appreciate it helps me out a lot ring the bell to be notified when i upload new videos and leave a comment below let me know what you think about the chevy beast concept vehicle pretty badass right so first thing i noticed this is the new jeep grand cherokee this thing is big Definitely not an off-road vehicle anymore. It is a luxury family hauler. And it is really pretty inside. Overlook concept. Oh, I see. So they got like a little bit of a bump in the back there as far as the ceiling goes. Kind of like the... Uh, like the Land Rovers and the Jeep Xterras had that little bump up in the back. That's kind of nice. I just saw somebody open this. I guess we can open it then if somebody else did. Oh, I see. That's pretty nice. I like that little bump in the back. It gives you a little bit of more of a, a view Woo. you can kind of see out the windows a little bit ah that's cool so they took a two-door jeep wrangler and kind of converted it to look like an old school jeepster commando this paint job is gorgeous
whoever did the paint job, man, they did an amazing job. Little beach style going on in there, surf style. Little roll bar. The back end slanted, just like the old Jeepster from the old days. Whoa, look at this. That is cool. This is a Kaiser M725 Concept. What? So if it's a concept vehicle, that means that this thing's a new vehicle that they just made look old. <laughs> that is cool. Got a V8 under the hood. 392 Hemi. Wow. I like that sand color. Let's look at how flat these windows are, man. That thing is completely vertical. <laughs> you get a rock fly up from a truck and it's going to crack that window, man. Got a pop top camper in the back. Oh, I see. They're using it as a business. Looks like an old ambulance, is what it looks like. Chuck Norris approved. <laughs> oh, look there. They're giving out. Hi. Oh, I see. Like, there's a K bar for a shifter. I don't know if you guys can see that. Let me see if I can see that. See the handle? It's a K bar handle. Like a Marine Corps fighting knife K bar handle shifter for a BM shifter. We got one called the Magneto 4XE. So, this is an electric Jeep. <laughs> That's cool. Everything's going electric for the future, see? 4XE. Electric four-wheel drive. And this is the short wheelbase two-door. Oh, you still got a transfer case, though. This one's called the Magneto. It says, comparable to a 3.6 liter Pentastar V6. Delivers 273 foot-pounds of torque, 285 horsepower. That's actually pretty good for an electric vehicle. It's not a hybrid, it's full electric. Very nice. You know, if you're gonna get an electric car, why get a Prius? Get an electric vehicle that can go off-road. Only problem is, is what if your battery dies and you're 20, 30 miles off in the back country? How are you going to get this thing home if you run out of juice? Leave a comment below. Let me know how that works. Do you have to carry an extra battery pack? Maybe carry a little gas generator as just an emergency? I don't know. Here's another 4XE. This is the four-door. That's nice, man. I wonder what the range is on this thing. A little bit of storage in the back. Beautiful seats. I like these, uh, <laughs> it says eject. Eject, eject, eject. Nice, big, beefy tube doors. Wow, that blue is actually really nice. See if I can fit this in here. Here's the charger. Yeah, that is nice. I like it. Oop. I'm still a little uh, hesitant to get a full electric vehicle just because I'm afraid of running out of juice somewhere where I don't have a way to power it back up. I'd rather have a gas electric hybrid, but then again, these do save you a ton of money.
Let's save the best for last. You got the TRX Ram. Look at this. There it is. The Raptor Killer. The TRX. Woo! That is a bad truck right there. Got little blue accents. Toe hooks. Carbon fiber trim. Look at this thing. So look at this. There's a Raptor in the mouth of the T-Rex. See that? Literally the Raptor killer. That's cool. What does it say on there? How many horsepower is that? It's a 6.2 liter Hemi V8. So it says it's a 6.2 liter Hemi V8, 702 horsepower, 650 foot pounds of torque. Woo! This thing probably eats gas like you would not believe. I'm guessing eight miles per gallon, maybe. If I owned it, I'd have to get some kind of extended range tank that has like 70 gallons or something, something huge. Even though it only gets eight uh, miles per gallon, at least with a big tank, you could go far. It costs you a arm and a leg, though. Then again, if you can afford this truck, you're probably not worried about gas prices. Because this truck is probably $100,000 right now. With the demand so high, it's probably easily a $100,000 truck. It's beautiful. Look at the size of that display, man. It's huge. There's a couple things here I really want to see. Number one is the uh, Toyota Tundra, which I already saw in the uh, lobby of the new uh, West Hall. But now that I'm in the official Toyota booth, there it is right here. There's that digital camo. Let's look at the new TRD wheels. You got the Toyota lettering in the grill. That's cool. And gone is the uh, TRD Pro on the side. But now they have TRD Pro in the in the tailgate. Looks like the uh, Sequoia needs an update because it's looking old. That's the old Sequoia body. There's a green Tacoma. It's like, I forgot the name of this one. It's like electric neon or something like that. Overlanding concept. Wait, are they saying that they could offer an overlanding Tacoma from the factory? That's kind of cool if they do. Because then you could just have everything you need all financed in one package. It would be kind of cool if they did do that. Yeah, of course. You may have Expedition 1. Yeah, that's who makes these uh, bumpers here. That's beautiful. Check this out. So here goes Tacozilla. I saw this uh, on social media prior to SEMA. So they took a Toyota Tacoma, chopped it up, put a fiberglass camper on the back. That's nice, man. Leather seats. There's your pass through. No windows. Nice and clean. That must be where the toilet is. 
full-size spare in the back. Oh, look at that red cedar floor. There's your toilet. Obviously, the bed's over the cab. You got a TV I can see. Sink, two burner stove. You got a little fridge right there. That's nice. Oh, you got it? Yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. It's like retro. And then, oh, what do we got over here? So obviously it's a Tundra, but it's a wide body Tundra. What? TRD A arms. It's actually stamped. TRD? What? So this is kind of like a, a Raptor killer. Because it's got the wide body. That's nice. Toyota people are going to lose their minds on this one. I'd be cool if you can get a special edition wide body Tundra TRD Pro. <laughs> that is awesome. Holy crap. That looks so nice. It just shows the potential that you can have with a new Tundra. That's beautiful. I absolutely love it. Look, see the bumper's gone. Everyone keeps complaining about the bumper in the front. Well, guess what? They uh, removed it and put two bumpers. That is beautiful. That's what I'm talking about. That's how I want my truck to look like. Oh, that is nice. Woo. Okay, and then the last one is, I seen this one too. I, uh, the last one is this uh, Tacoma. And they took an actual Tacoma truck bed and built an adventure trailer out of the uh, truck bed of a Tacoma. That is cool. You got some storage in the front, a rack up top. There's your generator, your, your hot water, on demand hot water, toilet, toilet paper. Here's your uh, privacy so you can take a shower or go poo. You got a rooftop tent. And then it has these scissor jacks. So this whole platform can come down when you're traveling and you pop it up when you get to wherever you're going. Here's your awning. And then of course, swing away tire carrier with fuel. You get a little two burner stove with sink. There's your storage for food and stuff. That's cool. They have a pad there like a yoga mat. I don't know if I'd want to lay there though. I'd be kind of scared to sleep underneath that thing. That's cool though. That's built off of a Tacoma truck bed. Here's a Dometic dual zone freezer. Freezer on one side, fridge on the other. That's nice. And it matches the Tacoma. <laughs> that is so nice. All right, guys, hit that like button to support my channel. Ring the bell to be notified when I upload new videos. And leave a comment below. Leave a comment down below and let me know what was your favorite vehicle at the Toyota booth at SEMA. Take care.